Hello, welcome back to Into the Breach, uh, episode 13. So, last time we successfully used the Blitzkrieg squad, this, these three mechs here, to defeat the Vec. And now it's time to jump to another timeline and do it all over again. But with a different squad. So we have through various achievements, we've got seven coins to spend to unlock the squad, so any of the squads, we could buy any of the squads uh, that remain. I'll just take a quick look at all of them. The Rusting Hulks. RST weather manipulators allow these mechs to take advantage of smoke storms everywhere. Now, I've seen someone else play with these, and their thing is basically to create smoke, which will uh, interrupt enemy attacks and also damage enemies with the smoke. That's kind of their, their primary tactic. Uh, ironically, the person I was watching basically uh, swapped out their smoke-related weapons for other weapons fairly early on because uh, they found they got a good deal on a nice weapon, so they didn't actually use those tactics for very much of the game. The Zenith Guard. Detritus's beam technology and Pinnacle's shield technology create a powerful combination. I have no idea what these are like. I'm guessing their beam technology might be like the robot beams? I don't know. Is that shields just the standard energy shields? Probably. Steel Judoka. These mechs specialize in positional manipulation to turn the Vec against each other. Okay. Flame behemoths. Invincible to flames, these mechs aim to burn any threat to ashes. I'm guessing they will have flamethrowers and things like that. That sounds quite fun. Frozen Titans. These Titans rely on the Cryo Launcher, a powerful weapon that takes an experienced pilot to master. So they'll be freezing things. Hazardous mechs. These mechs have spectacular damage output but rely on nanobots feeding off dead vec to stay alive. That's interesting. So I guess their weapons are the ones that do self damage and they have some extra healing passives. Maybe they heal every time they kill something. So smoke, uh, shields and lasers I guess. Positional manipulation, so moving Vic around and Turning their attacks around. Fire. Ice. And self damage, but large amounts of enemy damage too. So I haven't actually played the game with any of these, uh, although I did I did actually try a quick look at Rusting Hulks on another um, on another profile and did very badly with them. <laughs> I managed to use the smoke stops them, stops, uh, them attacking too, so I managed to uh, get myself in a position where I couldn't attack the enemies, but they could still attack us, which was kind of the opposite of what their, uh, their thing is supposed to be. Um, so, yeah, apart from those three squads, I have no idea what any of these others do, how they work, what they're really good at, what they're really bad at, and uh, so this is going to be as fresh for me as it is for you, unless you are ahead of me and are playing the game and have tried some of these other squads. So, I'm also thinking of uh, turning the difficulty up to hard, which means I probably don't want to try the self damage ones. That might be uh, giving myself slightly too many problems to deal with. Although I am very keen to try to see what they're like. I've had the self found the self damage weapon um, last game, or one of them, and the assigned it to the grappling hook tank but it was uh, I had armor on the grappling hook tank so the low the initial self damage was not actually damaging us so it wasn't really making use of that uh, trade-off cryo launcher well I do like freezing enemies it's a good way to get them out of the fight a uh, good way to cause obstructions fires if you're immune to fire that's great because uh, I have set myself on fire too often um, and fire damage is a reliable way to cause one damage to an enemy before they get to do anything in their turn. So
so that could be a lot of fun. Positional manipulation... Well, so far, most of the game with the enemy has been about pushing the Vec around to change their attacks now. Using that to turn them against each other, you've got more options for directing the attacks against each other is probably uh, fun to play. But sounds like it could be a lot more difficult to be effective with. So I'm thinking fire or ice. And you know what? Fire, you know, fire damage is great, and it will probably be a lot of fun, but it doesn't sound like it's quite as game changing in the way you play as frigid things. So I'm actually going to go with the cryo, the frozen titans, with the cryo launcher, and see what they're like. But well, they're, they're white, they're already snow camouflaged. So, uh, I'll take a look at them in just a minute. Uh, first, do I want to change the time traveler? So we had Prospero on the last mission, and he uh, survived through the last mission. His, his special ability, which needs power, is that a mech gains flying. His skills from leveling up are plus two HP and plus one move, which are both pretty good. Plus one move is great. Uh, I, the other skill I prefer to plus HP is uh, getting one extra reactor power. But uh, plus two HP is next best after that, so he's almost got the best possible skills. If I change the time traveler, as I can only use the uh, characters I've already unlocked in this game. So Ralph Carlson, the starting one, and Bethany Jones, who starts every mission with a shield, who we also had uh, last mission. And of course Prospero, but one who hasn't leveled up yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the Prospero from the last battle. He's He's been in one previous timeline, he's uh, made it all the way to one final battle. And flying ability is great, and I think none of these mechs are naturally flying, so that's going to give us some extra options. What are these mechs doing? So the Aegis mech... Its weapon is a Spartan shield. Bash the enemy, flipping its attack direction. Does two damage and turns its attack around. Mirror mech uh, for the brute. The Yanis cannon. Damage one, fire two projectiles in opposite directions. Okay. Just make sure there's nothing behind you that you care about. Uh, and the ice mech, the ranged. Cryo launcher. Freeze yourself and the target. Now that's that's uh, gonna be uh, an interesting challenge. Freezing yourself means if you're not careful you'll be stuck in ice the next turn unable to do anything. So I think that's definitely one way you need to be positioning yourself somewhere where you're gonna get attacked and then freeze the enemy. That's gonna be a lot of uh, fun and I'm sure I'm gonna mess up with that several times so it should be very entertaining. So, the Aegis mech is normally 3 HP and 4 movement, but right now Prospero's in that one with his flying ability. Now, flying is great for getting, uh, being able to get around better. Uh, you know, mountains and buildings are much less of obstacles than they are for the others. And since the Aegis mech's got the only, the only one that doesn't have a ranged attack, this, this is long range, and this is long range, Prospero's probably best starting off here so that we benefit from his extra movement and his flying ability, if we power it up. So, let's give these better names. It's the Spartan Shield. Bash the enemy, flipping its attack direction. So... Uh, capital letters, capital letters. It's a name. It is in your face. Mirror mech. Uh, brute class weapon, fire projectiles in opposite directions. So in your face with the shield, we've got... Uh, uh, hmm.
both hands, and the ice mech freeze yourself and the target. I'm gonna call that. Uh, well, let's see. What am I gonna call that? Unfortunately, I don't know how, how, how long can this name be? Uh, not very long. Maybe mistake, because I will probably mess up. Now, what are the achievements for this squad that uh, we might want to try and do? Cryo Expert. Shoot the Cryo Launcher four times in a single battle. That's probably likely to happen. Unless, again, I uh, freeze myself so I can't use it again. Trickshot. Kill three enemies with a single attack of the Yanis Cannon. And Pacifist. Kill fewer than three enemies in a single battle. Now that's an interesting one. Alright, so that's our squad. Uh, Prospero is our initial pilot, and we'll get two new pilots when we launch. And we're going to go up to hard difficulty. Increased spawn rates and more Alpha Vec. Both sound like uh, difficult things to deal with, but let's see how we get on. So let's get into the game. Right. Okay, this is your home, is it, Prospero? Considering these are the enemies that can already freeze things, we probably don't want to start off on the ice island. It'd be appropriate, but that's already gives us uh, ice-related uh, powers and side effects on maps. So, RST Corporation or Detritus or Archive. Well, Prospero just said Archive's his home, so maybe we should start defending his home. That seems appropriate. So, uh, I think that's the same text as last time. So I won't read it. What do we have? Now, as usual, we, we want to get our power grid up to max, but that will probably happen naturally if we don't mess up too often. We, other than that, we want to collect reactor cores and being able to buy them at the end of the island is probably best, so we want to collect these two-star missions if we can, to get more rep, to buy more reactor cores and more weapons and things like that. So we're only going to get four or five missions, I think, before the uh, corporate HQ comes under attack. So probably one of these two, then these two, that one, which unfortunately only gives us power back, no, uh, no rep or anything, and then that one probably attack. So we probably won't do both storage vaults and libraries. So let's have a look at them. Storage vaults is defend the artillery support and protect the power generator. Uh, I think we did that before. The artillery does two damage to two tiles but can barely move. I think it has like one tile of movement. So keep it keep it at the back out of the way and have it shoot the enemies for you. Not bad. It's useful to have an extra damage dealer on the map. The library tidal waves kill at least seven enemies and protect the coal plant. Well, there's no way you're getting the pacifist achievement on this map, but uh, the tidal waves will come in and slowly flood the map with water and killing enemies as it does so. So a lot of the time your enemies just slowly uh, kill themselves off uh, for, for, uh, by sitting where the water comes. Between these two... Let me just review these. Uh, so the Spider Shield flips an enemy attack and does damage, but doesn't push it. Okay. The Yanis Cannon hit, does damage, and pushes. And uh, the Cryo Launcher obviously doesn't push. So we only have one weapon capable of pushing enemies around. And uh, now there's water on this map, which would be nice to push enemies into. But the only weapon we have capable of pushing is the Yanis Cannon, which fires in both directions. And when you look at that, if we're pushing, sitting here, pushing enemies that land here into the water, we'll also be destroying these buildings behind us. So that would definitely be a liability on this map, I think. Uh, so that water would probably just be a nuisance more than a help. And in fact, the scattered buildings here means it's going to be really hard to shoot at enemies without hitting anything else. Unless maybe we stay on this side. Um... Do I have any uh, reactor power to spare? No. 
so I don't need to worry about upgrades so much. So I think I'm going to do the library and see how we go. Right, tidal waves are coming in from the side, so everyone's going to get pushed up this way. Uh, the Yannis Yannis is probably going to be hard to use on this map as well, come to think of it. Maybe I'll have to stay down here and fire sideways. So, seal for flipping enemy attacks. Let's sit there, let's take the Yannis Cannon around here, and Cryo Launcher up the back for freezing enemies. No. No, my normal uh, cryo launcher, my normal technique with sending the artillery up the back isn't going to work for the cryo launcher. Because freezing myself and getting stuck is going to be bad. It would keep, keep me off the field entirely, um, leaving me with only two units left. So I'm going to have to be a little more aggressive, I think, with cryo launcher. I'm going to have to move into harm's way of an enemy and then freeze another enemy so that the first enemy's attack hits me and removes my ice again. This is going to be going to take a, a twist in my normal thinking to get used to. All right, let's see what these these are going to do. Okay, so right now we have a uh, shell scion. This is giving all the uh, enemies here armor. So we can do less damage to them. We have a Scarab who's attacking the Gold Plant. We have a Hornet who is targeting our uh, Freezer. Yeah. So, what's the range on this? It's the same as everything else. You can't fire right next to you, but you fire anywhere else. Okay. So, we want to kill the Shell Scion. And I think a shield bash is probably the most efficient way to do that. It, now, the flipping an enemy attack isn't going to do anything good here. But it will kill the Zion, and that makes it easier to kill every other subsequent enemy. So let's just get it out of the way. Now, we can't, we've got terrible movement here. So... I'm not really going to be able to do anything much good at all. Huh. What am I going to do? What am I going to do about the Scarab, in fact? I can freeze it. I can just move here and freeze it. And then I will be frozen as well. Which is not brilliant, perhaps. Already I'm, already I'm having difficulty. So ideally, like, if I could uh, fire next to me, I could sit here and shoot at the Scarab and freeze it, and then the Vec that emerges next turn would break my ice and I'd be free again to move on the next turn. Which would be great, but I can't fire next to me and I can't reach this square in order to use that tactic. Or... So that's no good. Sitting here, the Hornet would free me from the ice, but uh, that gives me no useful targets to attack. If I could push the beetle there, that'd be one thing, but uh, our only pushing enemy can't reach it. So... Now... Let's see... I do need to stop that attack though, and if, since I can't push it and I've already used my shield to kill the Shell Scion, the only thing I have to do that with is... The only thing I can do is freeze it. And the only way I can freeze it is by sitting in one of these two places. And that would leave me frozen here. So that means I would probably need to use Omar in uh, both ends to shoot at me to free me from the ice. And if I did that, it would break my shield, push me into the Hornet, and then damage the Hornet and myself. I think the shield would be would absorb the cannon hit, so it would take no damage from a cannon hit. But then I would take one damage from being pushed into the Hornet, and the Hornet would as well. So that's not brilliant. Alternatively, I can come up here and do the same move there, and then... 
I'd be frozen at the back. Both ends could free me from it without damaging me. And we're leaving the Hornet alone to attack an empty space. So that's probably... It's not great at like leaving uh, Omar sitting here in the corner. I'm already got the problem that Omar can't move very well, but uh, so I'd like to have Omar up here to be useful against the enemies. Rather than here in the corner, really unable to be of any use whatsoever. But I don't want to damage myself on the first turn. So, I guess... That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the Cryo Launcher, Freeze Beetle. And then I'm going to shoot myself out of it. For better or worse, let's see how that goes. Tidal Wave. Pretty soon the tidal wave is going to restrict our movement as well. It's going to be uh, quite terrible. Okay, so what do we got here? We have a beetle threatening us. We have a hornet who's going to die to a tidal wave before it can attack. Another hornet that's threatening us. And a leaper who's about to dis just threatening to destroy two buildings here, which is really not great at all. So the Leaper is the primary threat. This would be a good chance to try our shield attack. That flip our shield, which we could bash it for two and flip its attack. So then it'd be attacking empty space here. Uh, unfortunately, we can't get there. Thanks to this beetle being in the way and our previously frozen beetle also being in the way. So that just suggests to me that uh, freezing this Leaper is again, we're going to probably just freeze it to kill its attack. Omar can't get near it, so really, Esther, in uh, the maybe mistake, is the only thing that can neutralize its attack. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about any of these other attacks. All of them, all of us can move out of the way, uh, or in fact, can attack the Hornet and kill it, and instantly flip the stack. Uh, even if we wanted, we would uh, be able to tank the attack. We've got plenty of hit points there. But killing the Hornet is probably the best thing to do there. So that means we can freeze the Leaper, and we're free to use Omar once again to break the ice. So, let's do that. Now, you're safe here right now, but uh, that could be problematic next turn, but let's let's kill this Hornet so we don't have to take damage. And see what, how the next turn plays out. Oh! Oh fuck, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Of course the water won't destroy the Hornet. The Hornet flies. I am such an idiot. Okay, this is not looking good. Right. Scarab does not fly. Will drown in water. Leaper does not fly. Will drown in water. Okay, so these two are going to drown. Uh, we've got one more turn. Our objective was to kill at least seven enemies, and so far we've only killed two. Uh, there's only one more turn of this tidal wave, which will kill two more. That'll bring us up to four. Can we kill three more enemies on this turn? Well, we can kill one Hornet with the shield. We could kill a second Hornet by pushing it into ourselves. That would bring the total up to six. That's one short. So we'd somehow need to kill one of these frozen enemies, which would mean unfreezing at first, which would mean two attacks. Yeah. I think we're going to protect the coal plant and miss out on uh, our primary objective here. That's not good at all. 
However, last turn I neglected to kill a hornet and it attacked the building and killed it because I forgot that hornets fly. I mean, they've got wings there and everything and they're hovering, you know. I have nobody to blame but myself for uh, that misapprehension. However, it was a mis I did misapprehend. So now we have to kill these two hornets. So we don't really do a lot of damage with any of these units. We can get extra damage by a push, enough to kill a hornet. Uh, we could get extra damage by fire, in fact, enough to kill a hornet. But um, it's only two out of three enemies. If we were able to push some of this ice into the tidal wave zone, great, they would drown there, but that's also not going to happen. So, how are we going to do this? I could come up here and push it. The tidal wave is no threat to us because we don't drown, we all just sit in the water unable to use our weapons. So it's viable to come here and bash the hornet. can't see a way of... Unfortunately, neither of these Hornets were, uh, you know, helpful enough to sit in this zone, otherwise I could freeze one of them. And that would... Uh, freezing a Hornet here would also let it drown. With, that would leave us with one unit spare to maybe do something. Maybe. No, I don't see any other way... I don't see any other way we can kill either of these. So let's just kill the ones we can. Dead. Dead. Ah, oh, we got a freeze action available. Great. I wonder, can we put out fires with ice? We certainly can. It makes nice snowy woods. Alright. Will the tidal wave melt the ice? This is stuff to learn about. Tidal wave will break the ice and leave us flying. That's unexpected that we're hovering there. All right. Well, uh, we failed our, our secondary objective of killing at least seven enemies. We got uh, five, no, five or six, six, I think. We did protect the coal plant. So we got our power grid back up one. Unfortunately, we also lost a building, which is our primary objective is to not let any buildings be destroyed. So, we lost one power from a building being destroyed, we got it back. Where basically, we got no rep, basically exactly where we were to start with. Uh, but we have three and one experience, respectively. Oh, that's not great. Oh, uh, look at this one, destroy the down and kill at least seven enemies. Well, I think we've got to try it. Protect the emergency batteries. So Archivist Hall has lots of water for getting enemies into, but we don't have push... We've only got one push attack. Not great. Uh, Retrospect Park. Destroy the dam and kill at least seven enemies. Now, the dam is nicely in the middle there, and I can uh, go and punch on the first turn, and if any enemies are sitting in the zone, in these two uh, rows of tiles, where it will flood, they will drown. So that's a good way to get a bunch of enemies killed up front. However, the buildings are one step further back, so the enemies are probably going to want to sit on this row to attack buildings. Most of them are... Uh, or if they've got range attacks, they'll probably sit back here. So I'm wondering if that dam is actually going to be of any use to us at all. We will have to find out. We start off with two Leapers, who uh, unfortunately are in... Well, one of them is in range of enemy buildings right away. And a Shell Siren, which is going to give them armor. Well, they only take one hit point to kill normally, so that means they'll take two. If we want... They will drown if we give them the chance. The Shell Siren won't, because it flies. Now, if we want to destroy the dam... The dam's got two hit points, so that'll take either a two damage attack with our shield, or two separate attacks with our uh, Yannis Cannon to kill. Now here's where the Yannis Cannon could be really handy. If there's enemies sitting somewhere along this line, we could sit 
on the side of it, fire the Yannis Cannon at the dam and at the enemy. That would be uh, a fun thing to do. Uh, our shield unit has a lot of range. He can move five tiles, two, three, four, five. So if he sits, if he sits here, for example, he could reach the dam if needed. So I'm going to put these here. And a cryo launcher. I'm going to sit the cryo launcher. out here. That way if I freeze with it and break the dam, I'll break, I'll unfreeze him as well. So that's uh, something for me to bear in mind. Leaper is attacking a building and not in the dam's attack range. Second Leaper is attacking us and in the dam's range. Shell Scion is in the dam's range, but it is flying enemy so it wouldn't die if we destroy the dam. On the other hand, but these leapers, they've got armor right now, but if I kill the Shell Scion, they won't. And they are sitting opposite each other. And there's nothing that we care about other than our movable units on either side. So I am seeing a brilliant opportunity here for us to kill all three. First, we'll bash the Shell Scion out of the way. I don't like that fire. I have, a, I have an idea. I have an idea, though. I can't get around there. I was thinking, sit uh, our... Sit Omar between them. But damn it, Omar can't move. Only those three units can't actually get there. That's... That's ruined my plan. I can't, I can't shoot this one here because I would destroy the building behind us. I could come here and shoot it and hit the dam. And that would do one damage, unfortunately, to our other friend there, the cryo launcher. Although, if we leave this leaper alive, I could freeze the building, which would defend it from the leaper's attack. Normally, the leaper would do three damage and destroy both buildings. But if I freeze it, the building, the ice will take those three hit points. Uh, take those, absorb those three damage and break, and the buildings will be unharmed. Then, Esther here in uh, maybe mistake will be frozen as well. So then I do this attack, hit the dam for one, hit the leaper for one, and killing it. Uh, well, actually for two, because it'll push the leaper into our frozen unit, and our frozen unit's ice will break, but also not have taken damage. So that's what I'll do. I can't kill them this both this turn, but I'll kill one and not take any damage ourselves. And um, protect the building from this attack. Right, let's see what comes out of the ground as well. Hooray, building unharmed. Oh, we're stuck here. Great. And we've got an Alpha Hornet attacking things, and we're under attack from two sides. So, first of all, that's not going to work. That's not going to be any good at all um, to just try and destroy the dam with our Yannis Cannon. There's nothing on this side that we want to attack with it. We're instead we're under threat from both sides. So, what can we do about this? That's a serious threat. That, the Leaper does three damage uh, and will kill us. Obviously, we can do this. We can kill the Leaper, no problem. And um, we can push the Hornet out of the way. So we can negate both those attacks, but we won't have destroyed the dam yet. It's okay. Leap will be dead, Hornet will be half dead. And Hornet will be attacking an empty spot, so that's acceptable. Next question, what about the Alpha Hornet? I could bash it with a shield, which will half kill it. Not entirely kill it, but will also reverse its attack to the direction, which means it should then be attacking these two squares. If I understand that correctly. Never tried it before, so I don't know. Uh, but it attacking these two squares is uh, acceptable. There's nothing there to worry about. So that's an option for the Alpha Hornet. And then we have maybe Mistake, who 
doesn't really have anything to do this turn. Now, if things lined up correctly, I could sit maybe mistake. Well, I could sit maybe mistake here or there. The ice puts out the fire after all, so I could sit there and put the fire out on myself. Fire my cryo cannon onto this building, shielding it from future attacks. Not this one, because we'll have reversed this one. And the, freezing myself. The ice will put out my fire, so I won't take fire damage. The hornet will attack this way and break the ice for me. So yeah, let's let's do that. I'm on fire. No, I'm not. Uh, double check. Yeah, I'm frozen, but not on fire. Oh, I am flying. How am I flying? Does this unit always fly? Maybe this unit always flies. I... Oh, what looks like legs are actually little hover uh, jets. I didn't realize we had flying already here. So we've actually got uh, one unit that already flies and Prospero, when we pair up his ability, and this one can, will also be able to fly. That's, that's good to know. Flying's great because it means you can hover over water and things like, and acid and things like that. Uh, well, pits of acid, not pools of acid. And uh, hover over water and attack. Normally water will uh, clog your weapons and stop you attacking. So we do need to flip this attack now. Both for two reasons. One, stop it attacking this building. These ones are safe, but that one would still die. Uh, also to damage to it, but also to free our uh, other unit from the ice there. So it's not going to do any damage, but it will break the ice. And uh, finally, we take an attack here and kill the Leaper and push this Hornet out of the way. So we've got two enemies left. We're going to have three new ones next turn. We've only half damaged the dam, so we do need to hit the dam again at some point to kill it. But let's see what happens. Thank you. I needed that. Thank you. Oh, did nothing. Another Hornet and two Scarabs. Now, this is bad news for us. At least in terms of the uh, the dam, because the great benefit of the dam is that when we break it, it's going to flood both these rows of tiles with water, and it would be so nice to have some enemies that don't fly sitting on those tiles in order to um, drown. We have to kill four more enemies. In, the ne in this turn and the next turn. If we're going to get this objective. And we have to kill the dam. Now this Hornet is on one health. It's no longer in line with the dam. So I can't I can't just shoot. It's not. I thought it was the other way around. So if I do this, I'll destroy the dam for sure. But I won't kill that Hornet. We have two Beetles. One of them attacking us. No problem. We can move. One of them attacking our... Frozen City, also no problem. We don't have to care about that attack, because it'll just break the ice. The Hornet also is looking to attack us, which we don't care about. Now, this Hornet would be a good candidate to freeze. If we free this, freeze this Hornet, then when we do break the dam, it should drown. I hope. I don't know. I don't know how that works, but I, I hope it works that way. I'll be very annoyed if it doesn't. Uh, but it'll be one less problem as well. So we might want to have Esther sit here, which is under attack both by the Alpha Hornet and uh, the Scarab, uh, in order to freeze the Hornet. We'll have to then deal with one of these attacks, so only one of them breaks the ice. I'm thinking of just going and hitting the Alpha Hornet with the shield just to kill it, because Alphas do too much damage to, uh, to leave them running around free. If we can tempt the Scarabs forward somehow, probably can't, but... Um, if we can, then they are candidates for drowning as well. So that leaves this Hornet. On the other hand, I could do one damage to both these enemies and push them back. It's not a terrible idea. That means they'll both be weak and open to be killed next turn, potentially. Then the Scarab will be attacking this spot and the Hornet will be attacking these two. Okay, that's pro maybe that's actually worth doing. Then... No, that doesn't work for freezing this, because then... 
the Hornet won't be attacking this spot, and neither will the Scarab, so I can't sit there to freeze this enemy. I have to be in a line with that enemy in order to freeze him, and there's no other attacks happening on either of those lines. So that's no good. I could move both ends down to this row and kill this Hornet. Shoot it, kill it, it would damage, do one damage to this beetle when it pushes, to the Scarab rather, when it pushes it into the Scarab. It would also break the ice on this building. Uh, and then that would be bad, because the beetle would not be dead and would be attacking the building. So that doesn't work. I could move here, by that way, but then it pushes the uh, Hornet into a building, so that's also no good. Now I don't need to freeze this Hornet, and maybe I don't have to. I could just bash it. If if I'm going to wound both of these, then I don't need to freeze the Hornet. Um, I could just kill this Hornet. Kill this one, wound that one, wound that one. Then what? Trail Launcher can freeze the Beetle. Leaving the building frozen, incidentally, so it's uh, attack, so it's safe against another attack later. And then this Hornet will break our ice and free us again. Now that's not great. That doesn't leave the Beetle free to move into the line of the dam, which I'd really... I would like the Beetle free to move into the line of the dam. That would be a nice, a nice outcome. But to be honest, the beetle probably won't move forward. So... I don't know, I'm thinking too much. Primary objective, stop buildings taking damage. Uh, so far, there's only one building under attack, and it won't take damage. So our primary objective is fine. Secondary objective, destroy the dam, kill these seven enemies. I don't know, I don't know. We've killed three. I'm really uncertain about getting any more. But we got to try. So let's kill the bears with it. Four. Let's weaken two more so that's, you know, so they're easier to kill. Why not? And let's freeze another building so it's safe from attack. We'll get unfrozen by the one. Let's see, let's see how this works. Thank you. Building unharmed. Empty space unharmed. Another Hornet, great. So my dreams of breaking the dam and killing lots of enemies that way is uh, not gonna happen. We do have to kill the dam, break the dam anyway. So this is the final turn. We need to kill three enemies and break the dam. We have a beetle attacking the spot. We have a second beetle who's wounded attacking a building that's that's quite safe. And we have two hornets attacking uh, three buildings there and it would destroy them all. And two buildings there. Now that's also a weakened hornet, so one damage will kill it. This is not exactly working out the way I planned. But let's look at our options. So, option one. Omar moves here, kills the Hornet, pushes the other Hornet out of the way, and that's one extra enemy killed, total five, and both buildings attack, both these two building attacks negated. Uh, this beetle building attack actually doesn't matter. This Hornet building attack does. So that's two out of the three building attacks that we have to worry about negated. Okay. Not terrible, but maybe not the best option. Option two, let me just get these out of the way just to, just to illustrate. Option two is to sit here and fire that way. That would kill a hornet, that uh, would kill a beetle, that's six enemies dead. It would hurt the other beetle. But... Uh, that also risks destroying a building. Now I could freeze that building first, perhaps, 
so that uh, the push doesn't destroy the building, but only destroys the ice. But that would take two units then to make this move to kill two enemies. And that still leaves two buildings, the, uh, one, two, three, four buildings basically under threat. So that might not be an option. Option three, uh, again, just get someone out of the way to demonstrate. Sit here, fire that way, break the dam and kill the hornet. So that was up to five enemies dead. Damn destroyed. Which sounds good. Except then we don't have any way of killing two more enemies as far as I can tell. That negates one building attack. And does an objective of destroying the dam. And brings our enemy count up to five. The question then can, can we kill two more enemies at the same time as stopping these building attacks? Or at the very least this one. This one has to be stopped. That's, that's devastating. Um, a cryo launcher does no damage. This is the problem with it. This is the problem with it and these kill seven enemies. Uh, is It's very hard to kill enemies when you freeze them. It makes them harder to kill, in fact. So if not only we're not killing, we're protecting them against being killed. It's uh, problematic. It is very good at uh, stopping attacks like this, though. We could freeze this unit and have nothing to worry about. But we'll freeze ourselves along here somewhere. No, freezing ourselves is not a problem. It's the final turn, so... Can we kill two enemies? I can't, unfortunately, get behind them. If I could get behind them for a shield bash, I could bash this one for two and push it into that one. And that would kill both. Certainly can't get behind them for, with Omar to do the same. So I can't kill those two beetles. Oh dear. I don't I don't like this. I don't think we're going to... I can destroy the dam somehow. I don't think I can kill seven enemies. Again. For the second mission in a row. And that is annoying. Which means... This is the only Hornet that I could freeze. And then maybe it would drown. I do want to know if that works. But I don't know how I can find out without trying it and risking everything else in the mission. That's not an issue. That's not an issue. We can ignore both those attacks. We need to stop these two attacks. So if I do this move... Assuming I do that move, then I need to figure out to stop these two attacks with these two units. So I can freeze one and kill the other. I'd rather kill the Alpha Hornet because I think it's more XP. So move here bash it, it's dead, that means freezing this hornet. Which you can just do from here, no problem. Yeah, I freeze myself, also no problem. Actually, I should move first, because breaking the dam... Well, I'm in the way of this. I've moved to... Oh, no, I can't... Oh, I can move to here. Move to here and I can freeze that hornet. Yeah. So if I move there, freeze the hornet, move here, bash that hornet. Both, it, both of them dealt with. Only one of them dead. Total five. Move here, shoot the dam, kill that hornet. Total six. We miss that objective. We at least get the other one. Beetle attacks don't matter. Primary objective of saving the buildings. Success. Well, I did turn the difficulty up to hard. I guess I have to learn to live with not always achieving everything I want to achieve. I wish they'd given us more, more non-flying enemies. Flying, so many flying, so many hornets, and uh, long-range enemies on a mission where to destroy the dam is is very rude. Very rude of the game to do that. However, let's let's get this done. Blooded. So uh, weapons waterlogged, uh, but that's no problem. Alpha Hornet dead for 4 XP. Uh, which means... Oh, well that's great. Well I'm an idiot. Get more XP with the one unit that doesn't need XP anyway. Prosper's already leveled up maximum, so uh, extra XP is ridiculously pointless. Well, let's freeze that Hornet and uh, cancel his attack. Uh, some achievement pop popped up there. Was that the use the freezer four turns in a row? Possibly. Uh, probably. I didn't see what it was. 
Those two attacks we don't need to care about, so let's just let them play out. And... Well... Archive is not going to be very happy for us. These bonus objectives, of course, are what the Archive Corporation wants us to do. Rather than save the civilians, which, you know, save humanity, which is what we really came back here for in the first place. So, we got one rep, we saved all 1,500 civilians, and we got four XP on our uh, double-ended cannon. Right. Old Town. Well, either Old Town or Archivist Hall. Um, Archivist Hall so that we can get to this one with the bonus objectives. Or if we don't care about that, if we think we won't get it, we can always do storage vaults. But, um, let's see what Old Town is. Do not kill the Volatile Vec. Great! Actually, normally I hate, normally I hate that objective. There's a Vec with four hit points running around. Uh, I think always, I think it's always a scorpion, and I don't, I really dislike scorpions because their thing is they web you in place so you can't move before they attack. And don't kill it, uh, both as an objective and because it'll explode doing damage all around it when it does die. Normally that's a pain in the ass, because here you've got an enemy running free that can lock you down in place and is generally still attacking things and you have to not let it die. This time, however, I have uh, ice. I can just freeze it. That should be the, <laughs> the easiest time to uh, get that objective achieved. Protect the clinic, also uh, an objective to deal with. At least we don't have to kill the seven enemies, you know. On both this one and this one, we failed to kill seven enemies. We're really not a damage dealing crew at this point. So, uh, even with the help of a tidal wave on the library, we didn't kill seven. But let's see how we can uh, achieve this mission. So we start off with the Thirds of Volatile Vec. Uh, annoying thing, but hopefully not a problem this time around. We've got an Alpha Leaper. They also web units in place, which is also terribly annoying. And a Hornet. Now both of these could actually have actually ranged to get up well up into our deployment zone. And the only thing I'm a little concerned about is if. Um, if the Volatile Vec webs our uh, freeze our freeze cannon, cryo cannon unit, then we won't be able to freeze it because we'll be adjacent to it. And we'll be stuck and able to move away from it, so that could be a nuisance. So whatever else, I'm gonna, probably going to put the uh, cryo cannon up here. Ah, make, insisting I put the other ones down first. Um, well, let's just put them down and think about that. No, I want you there. So, um, shield unit. He's got plenty of movement, so maybe we should start back here somewhere and hope the enemies come to us. And... Now, this is a problem. A double-ended cannon is also going to be a liability here. We've got only one rank free that we can shoot <laughs> backwards along without any building. And if we're shooting sideways on either of these points, there's buildings on both sides. Uh, it's going to be terrible. I'm kind of hoping... Uh, oh dear, this is bad. This just not, not work out as well. Kind of hoping they come here and web us. No, we can't get between them then. Oh dear, this is terrible. This is, this is terrible. This is just bad. Why is this so bad? I can start in the water. We can move from the water. Only got three movements, so that's really bad. Maybe maybe that way around. I don't know. Everything's bad. Let's see how bad it is. Well, they're not coming up near us at all. So far, so good. Okay, so first problem, this Leaper is well out of our way. We can't get there to shoot it without cannon and push it out of the way. So that's a problem. Um, on the plus side, we can definitely reach it to freeze it. We can come up here and freeze it. That means we'll probably have to use uh, both ends to break our ice and push the Hornet into this spot. It won't drown the Hornet, unfortunately, because it doesn't drown. But it would move it out of the way. Or we could bash the Hornet and have a free shot down this way. Uh, which we might 
end up tanking the crossroad. If we freeze the Hornet though, we can't freeze the Volatile Vec. We can move here and freeze the Volatile Vec for sure, but that, that uh, firstly, we're stuck in ice and the Volatile Vec is a problem. But Prospero can't move because of this down Hornet. Can't move at all. That's bad. Uh, the Volatile Vec is attacking building. That's bad. The Alpha Leaper is more of a threat. It's going to destroy two buildings. At worst, the Volatile Vex is going to destroy one. They're all attacking buildings, not us. This is this is not this is the opposite of what I wanted. I wanted them to attack us because at least they don't kill buildings. So I think I have to hit the Alpha Leaper. I really don't see there's any other. I have to freeze it. I don't see there's any other way to negate this attack against the building, and I sure as hell don't want to lose two buildings on the first turn. Maybe one, maybe one. When it's only one, because he's only got one damage, then we have. Then it's maybe worth gambling on our 15% chance that the that the building will will uh, resist it. You'd think I'd get the double end cannon down here, but we can't even reach. So a double end cannon is. Damn useless this turn. Our brute is almost damn useless. He can bash the hornet, but he can't get anywhere in here. Um, and even then, he's oh, he can't attack from here because his bash is waterlogged. Can't even bash the hornet. All right, whatever. Ah, <sighs> so I'm pretty screwed this turn, or at least the civilians in uh, this building here are pretty screwed. I'm really sorry, but they're gonna get attacked by the Volatile Vec, and they're gonna have to they're gonna have to gamble on their 15 percent chance. Uh, I can kill the Hornet though. I can break the ice and kill the Hornet thanks to a brute sitting there taking one damage and causing one extra damage to the Hornet from it being pushed into it. So I'm going to do that. Now, well, I can get out and bash the Volatile Vec to do two damage. Do I want to do two damage to it? The other thing is, if I do that, oops, undo the move. I might want to do it from here. Our bash doesn't push, which is unusual. Uh, de I definitely don't want to do it from there. It will reverse the attack, so the buildings are still safe. And I think, since buildings are our primary objective and the Volatile Vex is secondary, I think I'm going to do that. It's now going to attack empty space. It's half dead, but hopefully we freeze it next turn, and that way being half dead doesn't matter. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. We saved the building at least. And we got another Leaper and a Scarab. Yes, oh god, it's really being a nuisance, isn't it? Oh, this is bad. This is terrible. Alright, so once again we can freeze the Leaper if we need to. Um, that's easy. The question is, how can we unfreeze ourselves after we do after we freeze it? So, we can't use both ends to shoot ourselves to unfreeze ourselves because the Omar's web down and you can't move at all. You could say, let's just shoot, do that, freeze it, and then use Omar to shoot this way. We would break both bits of ice, so then the uh, Volatile Vec would be unfrozen again, and it'll be sitting here and it'll be attacking that building. That's no good at all. And also, Omar's about to take three damage and die, which is also no good at all. Omar can't free himself easily, and actually damage the the uh, beetle at the same time, and kill the leaper. And that's good. Unfortunately, he doesn't push the beetle, so the beetle's, beetle's attack is still going ahead. Now, that attack does go both ways, so if somehow... It's not possible, but if somehow Esther was able to sit here and freeze the Volatile Vec, then that would solve both problems. We'd sit there, we'd freeze it, we'd break our own ice when we shoot here, we'd free ourselves, destroy the Leaper, hurt the Beetle, and we could go bash the Beetle. Alright, that's, so that's no good. Instead of freezing the Volatile Vec, we could freeze the Clinic. That would, that would negate the attack. But we would have no way of unfreezing ourselves. These spawns, are, well, they're all out of our way as well. We, we can't, that's very far to move. We really want to be in the middle where enemies are going to attack us to use our cryo cannon. 
opposite of normally our artillery we want to keep on the edge so it doesn't come under attack. This time we want to come under attack every turn and let the attack happen. It's uh, it's a bit of a mindfuck. If I freeze the Volatile Vic, if it's, let's say I come here and freeze the Volatile Vic and stay frozen. We can freeze the Volatile Vic, we can kill the Leaper, we can kill the Beetle, and then we'll have three new enemies to deal with next turn. And our frozen unit here also to deal with. I don't like it, because that means I'll be a unit down next turn, maybe I'll get freed up next turn if an enemy attacks us. You know, they hope. I don't like it at all. But it is what I've got to deal with. Actually, I can block one. Let's have two enemies to deal with next turn. Let's just have two. Let's block a spawn. We'll take one damage, but we've got plenty of health right now. I hope it plays out well for us. Hornet and another Scarab. Hey, okay, the Hornet's threatening us. The Scarab... Oh, look at that. The Scarab is doing exactly what we wanted to do. It's uh, attacking our frozen unit. And uh, three spawns coming up. If I move here, bash the Hornet, then the Hornet's dead. Which is great. I want that Hornet to be dead. I don't really want to block another spawn. So we'll have four units next turn to deal with. It'll be the last turn. We'll deal with them somehow. And I'm gonna move up here, so at least we've got some freedom to be to move around and perhaps be of use. Beetle will free our unit from the ice here, so I don't want to kill it. And I don't want to push it. And the only attacks I can do, if I just undo that move, the only attack I can do to it is that, which will push it and instantly push us into a building, so that would be really bad. So I'm just gonna move here, sit here, and, uh, oh, action available. Oh, I can repair myself to remove ice. Well, I didn't realize that. Huh. Huh. Okay. That might cha might have changed things on turn. Right now, I'm going to let this turn play out. But uh, that's good to remember. If I do freeze myself, I can always repair myself on the next turn. I won't get a turn. I'll miss a turn, but uh, I'm not frozen for the rest of the mission. That's, that's at least good to know. Um... I was thinking, the Hornet was sitting here, the Scarab there, if I could get the Omar to sit there, which is actually in Omar's range, if Omar could sit here, fire both ways, it would kill the Beetle, and hurt, we would wound, but not kill the Hornet, and then the Hornet would be attacking this spot. That would be bad, because it would push the Beetle into this frozen Alpha Leaper, which would free the Alpha Leaper next time. I don't want him free, I don't, I don't want the Alpha Leaper free to move, so I'm going to let this play out. Uh, just like this. Freezes from the ice. And three new enemies. A hornet. Uh, shell Scion. I didn't want that. And another hornet. Well, the good news about the Shell Scion is it doesn't attack. It just makes it hard, hard for us to kill enemies. And that is good news because we don't actually have an objective to kill seven enemies this time. We just have to uh, save the civilians. And we have a Hornet here attacking a building, a Scarab attacking the same building, and another Hornet attacking another building. Unfortunately for us, none of these units are lined up for our double-ended cannon. That's bad. Um, and in fact, we're kind of hemmed in right now. Oh, well, these two are. What am I talking about? We can fire right here. We won't kill anything. We'll do no damage at all to the Scarab. But we will push the Scarab there. And this attack hits this Hornet. Instead of the building. That's great. Let's do that. This attack is neutralized. Uh, so we have a choice. We can bash this Hornet to kill it. Or we can bash this Hornet. Oh no. Bashing, oh, bashing won't kill either Hornet. Bashing isn't going to kill either Hornet. What am I talking about? Because this... He is a problem. Oh dear. Oh dear, that's not good. I can freeze one of the hornets. So one of them is no problem, but the other one, I can't kill it. And the bash doesn't push it either. 
Oh, the bash reverses an attack. All right. Uh, so I bash this one. It only takes one damage because it was armor, and now it's no longer attacking the building, it's attacking us. That's okay. I'm fine with it attacking us because we've got three health, we can take the damage. And finally, I can freeze this Hornet, which will cancel its attack entirely. Then, Scarab attacks it. It'll break the ice, but it's fine, the Hornet's not going to attack. So the Hornet takes no damage. We're not killing any of these. Thankfully, it's no longer an objective, it's just nice for XP. Um, but, all, most importantly, all the buildings are safe. And the clinic is safe. One objective. Volatile Vec is safe. Second objective. That's actually mission success, even though we've got lots of enemies still alive. And uh, we're stuck here frozen, but that's alright. Well, last turn, it doesn't matter. The frozen titans, one of them literally frozen, have saved the day. Two rep, all civilians protected. Uh, very little XP, we're gonna level up so slowly. I might actually have to swap our pilots around. Um, so that the unit that has does the most damage, has the best chance of killing things, have the pilots that need leveling up in them. Otherwise they're just not gonna get any experience whatsoever. So we have done three missions and we've got three reputation and that leaves so oh it's only one more mission to go not two so if I do archivist hall I'm pretty sure we're not that we're gonna lose this territory before we get to it so maybe I should be doing storage vaults before I go there let's let's look at swapping our pilots around now the great thing about Prospero in this one is he gives it plus two move so if I take him out. Sorry, plus one move. We're down to four movement. Uh, he would also give it flying, but we haven't powered that up yet. We haven't got any reactor cores. So... He also gives it plus two, plus two health, so it was better at tanking and better at moving, which is really good for the kind of unit it was. But it also means our other pilots... Three missions in, we've got ten XP for Omar. And one for Esther in the Cryo Launcher. Only one. And that's really not good. So, the only way they get extra skills, which are highly valuable to for them to have the extra skills, is by getting kills. You don't get XP for doing missions, you don't get XP for, you know, actually defending the civilians and saving the world. You only get XP for kills. It's uh, unfortunate, but if I want to get any extra skills on these pilots, I'm going to have to level them up. And that means they're going to have to be do doing damage. So Esther is going to take over in your face, and Prospero is going to sit in maybe mistake and be able to move better and have more health for all the good that they do. Like, maybe mistake freezes itself every turn, so probably doesn't need any health at all. Alright, I don't think I'm going to be able to get two more missions, so I am just going to go for storage vaults. And uh, we're going to get... So that's going to be a total of four rep if we'd succeed. We're going to be able to buy one reactor core if we're lucky. We're going to be we're going to be so underpowered. I guess that's why they call it hard mode. So, on the, at least on this one, for the sake of kills, we do have an artillery unit to help us out a little bit. We do have to keep it alive. So we get a scion right off the bat. We get a leaper and a hornet off the bat. Now our artillery unit. Uh, does two damage to two tiles and can move one space. So we've got a single movement. Uh, for it to be useful, it's probably going to want, need to go back and forth along here or something. But we'll find out. We'll use it as best we can. We will want to kill the Leaper and the Shell Scion on the first turn, if we can. Shell Scion to get rid of armor, the Leaper, because it does a lot of damage. The Hornet, we can... Well, we could freeze them as well. I wonder if we freeze a Scion, does that negate its passive ability? I'd imagine not, but I really don't know. I guess we're going to find out. So where can the Leaper get to? Right, the Leaper can get next to the artillery, which I don't really want to happen. 
Maybe if we block that spot with one of our units, it won't. Uh, but which one? Probably, no, not that one. Probably put our cryokin in there because it flies and it's going to be least, least obstructed by being there. Uh, bash unit here because we've got less movement than before and at least can get around a bit. Put you there so the mountain's not an obstruction. And I guess. Well, where's the double ended cannon going to be useful? Building's back here, so shooting down this way is a pain. Up here, maybe? At least there's nothing on this side, so you can shoot sideways most of the time. Yeah, I'll try that. See what happens. And we've got the time pod! So uh, that's going to have a reactor core and, with luck, a uh, weapon or something for us. Alright, well, some good news and some bad news. Uh, good news, the Hornet's attacking our artillery, which does not matter at all because it won't kill it. And in fact, we can move our artillery here and kill the Hornet. So that'll be one enemy dead. Uh, the Leaper attacked in your face, which can kill the Leaper. Even with its armor. So that's also good. If we kill those two. Bad news, we can't kill the Shell Scion. We can come up here and damage it. Which leaves us in a good spot for, uh, doing damage to these units again, or in a second one to the Shell Scion next turn. Um, bad news, oh, no, we won't, bad news, we won't kill the Hornet with the artillery. Because of the armor. But okay, it's still alive. But its attack isn't doing any harm. I could freeze it, but I don't want to. Or I could move here and freeze the Leaper, which might be a better bet, actually. If I move here and freeze the Leaper, there's no kill, so no XP. Uh, and that leaves a Bash Unit free to pick up the Time Pod. Alternatively, Prospero goes and picks up the Time Pod and doesn't attack this turn. Does no freezes. We Bash that one and kill it that'll be a death that'll be a death that'll be some XP which do I want uh, in terms of the rest of the mission in your face is our damage dealer and really should be on the front lines because enemies are spawning up here so I think actually I'll make use of the fact that we didn't kill a hornet uh, and freeze the leaper you know, maybe later we'll get a chance to push it into the water. Who knows? Uh, we'll get freed out of the ice. We will pick up a time pod. Have our damage dealer up near the front lines. Have Omar up near the front lines. And have maybe Mistake freed from the ice without taking damage. Oh, he's got an action available. Nothing to attack. Thank you. Alright, another Alpha Hornet, and a Scarab. Alright, so everybody's attacking the artillery. The Alpha Hornet is attacking the artillery, and actually our, uh, our absolute ranged unit made a mistake. And the Scarab is as well. So that's good news, we can move the artillery out of the way. But I'm not sure if we can actually put it to use after doing so. There's also this half dead hornet attacking a building. And the half dead shell scion sitting inconveniently out over the water where it's very hard to attack. We could bash it, but I will probably need the shield bash for something else. Um. Unfortunately, this water is a nuisance. I really want this unit to fly. If this unit could fly, we could sit there. Bash the Alpha Hornet, it would kill the Beetle for us, because it will attack first. And hit that spot. And thus, uh, it would also be half dead. It would be half dead and kill the Beetle, its attack would not cause us any problems. Our artillery would be safe to do whatever. And, well, you know, just generally less problems. What am I going to do about this Hornet? 
I cannot. I could shoot it to kill it, uh, but that would risk destroying a building as well. It would actually not take damage from the shot. It takes damage from being pushed into the building. Because uh, right now it's got armor. Everything's got armor. I want the shell silencer to die. I can't get to the silence in the way. I can't get to any spot to actually uh, kill the shell silencer. The only options I have is I could move up here and freeze the Shell Scion. Um, then I have the problem of how do I break myself out of the ice? Maybe I should. Maybe I don't. Again, freezing it. I don't think it'll kill it. If it freezes it, firstly, I don't know if freezing it uh, negates its passive bonus. Secondly, I'm freezing it above water. Now. When we got frozen above water, when, when uh, our fro freeze cannon got frozen above water, the water, the wat well, when the tidal wave came in, it was frozen, uh, the water broke the ice, and we were f left flying above the water again. We didn't sink into the water at all. So I'm wondering if that would just be entirely pointless, if it would freeze, fall in the water, the ice would break, and it would just fly above the water again. Or would it drown in the water? I really don't know. I don't know how this works. And uh, I guess experimentation is the only way to find out. And so if I have the freedom to make that experiment, I will do it. Freedom to make that experiment means we deal with all three of these. Uh, these two attacks we can just move out of the way of and have a pointless a artillery with nothing to do this turn. Uh, let me just, yeah, like, like other ranged ones, I can't shoot next to it. Um, if maybe the stake is not there, the artillery can move there and get an attack off, but it won't kill anything, so that's fine for the beetle, it's bad with the hornet, so that's no good. How do we do this? I could potentially shoot the hornet, won't hurt it at all, but it will push it here. It'll fly over the water so it doesn't drown, but then it'll attack the mountain and an empty space. That's an option. We can move the artillery so the beetle won't kill it. Or we just move the artillery and don't care about either of those. Maybe I should freeze the Alpha Hornet instead of the uh, Shell Scion. If I freeze the Alpha Hornet, can I do it somewhere where I'll get get uh, broken out of with the ice? Um, well, I can sit here, actually, and I could freeze either of them. And then come here and shoot, break myself out of the ice, and push. We can freeze the apple hornet and then push it. Uh, huh. We'll also find out whether, how the ice and flying unit and water interact. Okay. I still have a problem. I still need to deal with this. I can't. I can't reach it to bash it. So, honestly, all the shenanigans around. Freezing shooting is is relevant. I do need to shoot this. I do need to do something with the hornet, um, which probably means freezing it. I do have an artillery, which can damage the unit for me. Uh, it, if it could get in range of the uh, scion, it could kill it. But it's just got so basically no movement. It just can't get in range. Honestly, the best thing to do with it might be to freeze it sometime to defend it, but we'll, we'll worry about that later. Two new enemies coming up next turn as well. So, next turn looks like it's going to be difficult, unless we can kill and freeze things. I can't kill anything this turn. Except this hornet by pushing it into a building. Let's think about that some more. Where can Prospero reach? Prospero has four movements, so... If Oma moves here, Prospero moves there. Then I can freeze the building. Then take a shot. Break the ice on the building, but not damage it. Kill the Hornet, thanks to the push. Break my own ice, so I'm free next turn. That's not terrible. Then, after that, move the artillery up here so it's not under attack. And that leaves. Esther free to either bash the beetle 
or the Scion. And to be honest, it's probably going to be the Scion. Well, the Beetle does damage. I don't know. I guess I'd rather have three enemies that can do that can attack and not be able to kill them than, than have four enemies that do attacks and maybe have a chance of killing one or two next turn. Alright, I think this is a plan. Let's protect the building from this push. Uh, at least we're safe, they say. They're not, they're not happy being cold, but they're safe. But let's break them out again. Yay! Let's get the artillery safe from attack. It's got... It can attack, but it's uh, basically entirely pointless to do so. Unless bash a beetle. Oh, it doesn't kill it because it didn't kill the Scion. I'm an idiot. However, interestingly, it didn't reverse its attack, which would have been off the board. It cancelled its attack entirely. I was wondering how that worked in case it, you know, maybe it meant it was attacking here, but no, it cancels it. That's good to know. However, I'm back where I didn't want to be with four enemies that'll be able to do attacks and actually the Scion that I That's bad. I don't want that. I'm going to use my reset. I'm going to play out the rest of the turn the same, but I'm going to kill the Scion. Instead of not kill, actually killing the beetle. So you move there, you move there, freeze the building, kill the hornet. Okay, get out of the way. Kill the scion. Now they don't have armor, uh, and I can't shoot them. But that means next turn we may have a chance to kill some of them. Forest is on fire. If it wasn't, it would be now. And we've got another Hornet and a Leaper. Okay, so... The Alpha Hornet, who is a long way away from all our units, wants to kill a building. Now, fortunately, it only targeted one. So worst comes to the worst, there will only be one building under attack. We can maybe be able to freeze it. We've got a Leaper that wants to free its other friend Leaper from the ice. We do not want that to happen. So maybe we need to kill the Leaper. We may be able to do so with the artillery. It's only one hit point. Uh, but the artillery would be more fun against these two. They're both two hit points. It would take one hit to kill them both. Unfortunately, doing so means moving, setting ourselves on fire. And taking one fire damage. And that would be bad because then it would the artillery would take one fire damage at the end of this turn and one fire damage at the end of the next turn and die and we'd lose lose the mission. So I don't think I can use the artillery where it would be of most use. I have a freeze cannon. Um, it can't move quite far enough to sit here, which would be great. If I sit here, freeze the Alpha Hornet, then we would, the ice would be broken as we emerge. You know, less problems. Okay. We didn't hurt the Alpha Hornet at all, so freezing it's the best, our best bet. How do we freeze it? We can sit here We can't sit here. Damn it. Are we going to freeze ourselves and not be able to do anything next turn? It's kind of looking that way. Esther can get here and bash the beetle and the beetle's dead. There's one less energy to worry about that leaves the hornet. We'll kill the leaper. We will... Freeze the alpha hornet. Then what is both ends going to do? Yeah, we do have the option of coming over here and shooting that way, but that's bad because we kill one leaper and free another one from the ice. We don't want, we don't want to do that. Um, Prospero is so far up to this end of the map, even with his extra movement, he can't get far enough up here to freeze. Like, if we could get there, we could freeze uh, the Alpha Hornet from there and move here break out ice and kill this hornet. One damage from the cannon, one damage from pushing into the beetle, then we come up and bash the beetle. You know, that'd be nice. 
But we can't get there. So the only place we've got two choices for where we freeze the Alpha Hornet from. I think in both of them we're kind of stuck. Although I do have a solution. If I bash the beetle, then do the freeze, then come here and shoot, uh, we do two damage to uh, Esther and break the ice. That's not good. That's not good. Nothing's good. Nothing works. Why does nothing work? Why does this game hate me? Alright, well let's do the one thing we can do with the artillery. Without without that killing it. Uh, sadly. Which is destroy that leaper. It's gotta be done. And freezing the apple hornet has also got to be done. Doesn't matter that we can't free ourselves. Maybe we have to make do next turn with just two units. We have a job to do, we have to save the civilians. Let's do our job. Omar then is probably best place to just weaken the Hornet. And Esther can kill the Beetle now. We'll have three units next turn. We may only have, sorry, three enemies. I mean, we may only have two units available to try and manage them. Plus, hopefully the artillery will be in a position to get a shot. That's all we can hope for. Another Hornet. And a scarab. Uh, so, good news, no alphas. Bad news, there's a hornet a long way away where we can't get at it. We're gonna have to freeze the hornet. Good news, we can kill uh, one of these two right away. So let's just kill the scarab while we can. Uh, our bash is not going to be very useful for anything, but he's in the way. Uh, S is in the way. So... Well, we could bash the eyes. Um, it's no real harm, but what I was thinking of doing was actually using Omar to kill the horn and break the ice. And then Prospero comes up here, freezes out of the Hornet. All the buildings saved, artillery is safe, power generator is safe. Mission success. We get one rep and one more bump to our power grid. Saved all the civilians, and this time we're getting a little more XP than we did previously. Six for Esther, four for Omar. None for Pro Prospero because he's already max level. And we also got a time pod which has just, just a reactor core. No bonuses, no weapons, no pilots. That's fine, Will. One core is definitely better than none. And as predicted, that was the last mission we got to do before the HQ is under attack. HQ, we have a beetle leader which uh, runs in a straight line and uh, hits things for damage. And unfortunately, it would be easy to freeze, but we, our job is to destroy it. And it'll have, I think, four, maybe five hit points. So it'll take a few attacks to, to, in order to destroy it. And it's going to be running all over the map where we're going to have a hard time actually hitting it. So we'll see, we'll see, what, see if we get a chance to, to destroy it or whether we just have to freeze it. Uh... There may be some tricks we can do there. And we gotta protect the corporate tower. But first, let's spend our power. And before all that, I've just noticed the time. Um, so I'm gonna end this episode here. I'm going to stop for a cup of tea and come back to record again in, within in five minutes. So if you're just watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. The follow-up episode will be posted on tomorrow on YouTube on YouTube. Uh, that will actually be Sunday, I guess. And for the rest of you, I will see you back here in a few minutes.